Thanks for the opportunity to spend a few minutes discussing the ISFGS, the International Society for Fluorescence Guided Surgery. The organization has at its core a couple of shakers and movers who you recognize from throughout the world. It is a truly global, international, and interdisciplinary organization. As you can see, Fernando Dip from Argentina is the president, Michele Diana from Ericad France, the secretary, the president-elect, Dr. Raul Rosenthal from Cleveland Clinic, Florida, and the past president, Dr. Takiaki Ishizawa from Japan. These people represent the spectrum of surgery and indeed, our International Advisory Board is from North America, South America, Europe, the Middle East, Japan, and Australasia. It is a truly interdisciplinary international organization. As you look down the list of, of renowned experts, you see that these folks represent endocrine surgery, general and plastic surgery, basic science such as biochemistry, cardiothoracic and plastic surgery, more basic science with molecular and cellular pathology, epidemiology. The group is beyond just surgeons. Biomedical engineering, as you can see listed as well, from around the world. This is a very unique society because it is new and because it encompasses so many different disciplines within and from outside of surgery from around the globe with different levels of expertise. Most recently, the society has started to have regional uh, advisory boards and regional chapters. So you can see Argentina, for example, uh, Japan, Australasia. Overall, we've grown rapidly during COVID by about 50%, give or take, from 665 members in November 2020 to 924 members in December uh, 2021. And thanks to COVID, we are offering a special for free membership for 2022, which is one of the reasons that I'm here with you today sharing the ISFGS information, because we are looking for an infusion of many more people, like-minded people, and people who may not completely agree with the technology, because it's important that we hear from those people as well. The bulk of our members are from the U.S., but not the majority just the largest single number. You can see uh, from Europe, from, from Latin America, from Africa, uh, really all over the world. Uh, but we need to hear from everybody. Depending upon your experience, you may have different things to share, and we need to know that. You can look down the list, and if your country is on this list, we need to increase the number of people by your joining ISFGS. If your country is not on the list, Let's be sure that the next time Dr. Rosenthal or Dr. Dip or, or Dr. Luigi Bonnie or uh, any of us uh, give a lecture that we have your country listed too. The newest addition, as I mentioned, in addition to the advisory boards are the international chapters in Asia, in Europe, and Dr. Luigi Bonnie mentioned that in December 2021, mentioned during our first panel for this meeting, mentioned that during December 2021, the first ever chapter, which was the European chapter, held a meeting in Milan, Italy. There's also chapters in South America and North America. In addition, as I mentioned, it's not just surgeons. Although the majority are surgeons, 57%, we welcome surgical trainees and residents. We don't have too many of them yet nurses, hospital administrators, industry partners, all kinds of people. Again, the more views we get, the better the information is going to be at the end of the day. And specialties as well. Although we have a large number of general surgeons, 180, there are surgeons from virtually every discipline here, including multiple categories within other. We do have somewhat of a global impact. We're on YouTube. Uh, and you can see our 2020 views on YouTube was 62, went to 562 in 2021. Instagram from 115 all the way by a, an order of magnitude increase to almost 1,500, and, and, and Twitter as well. So we have a pretty robust social media presence. And very importantly, we have a, a, a webinar series. And actually, I should say we have several webinar series. At present, we have an English language series and a Spanish language series, but there's no reason why in the future we can't also incorporate other languages to have webinars getting out the message. I direct you to this page. 
uh, the International Society of Fluorescence Guided Surgery webpage, www.isfgs.org, for more information. This particular uh, page it, it shows the Latin American webinars uh, in Spanish. And our website is getting a lot of traffic. So again, while we had 24,000 page views in 2020, in 2021, we had almost 36,000 page views. And very importantly, the number of new users pretty much doubled and the number of sessions pretty much doubled. Again, with the U.S. more or less at the top of the list, followed by uh, Latin America, and then a mix from around the world for other people using the website. And we do plan to increase. Part of the reason the ISFGS gets a lot of traction is because what we do. An organization is only as good as the people who form the organization and the work that those people do. And I'm very proud to say that some of the work we've done has been tremendously recognized. For example, publishing in Annals of Surgery, our consensus conference on the uh, general use of near-infrared fluorescence imaging and endocyanine green-guided surgery, you can see many of the names I've already shown you on the slides have put this together. So this uh, Delphi survey of international experts with two rounds of voting came with 70% and 80% set as a priori thresholds for consensus and for vote robustness, uh, respectively. And you can see how it worked out. We had six different surgical scenarios, cholecystectomy, general colorectal surgery, and, and, and so on. I won't read the list. We had consensus on 86% of, of the statements. 99% of the participants agreed that uh, fluorescence-guided surgery and endocyanine green are very safe and that use will increase over time in surgical practice as well as in research. 95% agreed that fluorescence-guided surgery increases visualization of anatomy. And you can read the rest of what's on the slide, but basically the group had an overwhelming, almost unanimous consensus that ICG is something we should be including in our surgical practices. And again, that's why I'm here with you today. This is a unique society. It's a society around a multidisciplinary technology. It's not around an organ system. It's not around a disease. So it's different than many societies. And in addition, it is completely democratic. Anyone who wants to join can join at present for free to participate in the investigation and dissemination of knowledge of this amazing, or at least what we feel, amazing advance in our ability to see during surgery. So you can see some of the statements and some of the consensus uh, amongst the 19 experts, pure consensus in, in many of them, near consensus in others, but basically, we feel that it's a better way to see, a better way to visualize uh, tissues. So if we look at the consensus support for fluorescence imaging, there's strong support, largely from work done by Dr. Rosenthal of laparoscopic cholecystectomy and being able to see the critical view, anastomotic uh, assessment, uh, the work done by Mike Stamos and, and others uh, with the uh, original pillar trial. And again, many things listed on the slide, but, but some newer ones, uh, like for example, sentinel node mapping and gastric cancer surgery. Although, as we heard during our first uh, session from this program, these areas are also uh, coming online. And I will direct you to one of the upcoming issues of surgery in which there will be a special supplement from the International Society for Fluorescence Guided Surgery including seven more Delphi study articles, all of which will be open access, that will show us some of the other feelings about uh, ISFGS as reached by consensus uh, from the group. So our first paper was published in the annals. The next special edition will have these articles as listed on cholecystectomy, colorectal surgery, lymphatic surgery, gastric, plastic, thyroid, and parathyroid, and, and then a summary. So stay tuned for later this year for the ISFGS supplement in surgery. In addition, the ISFGS is supporting work, which again is why I encourage people to join and to participate in this group. Uh, there's a two-round Delphi survey on the use of fluorescence imaging during pancreatic cancer surgery, and publication is pending. And then another possible Delphi study on sentinel node detection uh, in breast cancer surgery with data being collected by, by uh, Kevin White and the study being supervised by Drs. Rosenthal and Dipp, 
with early planning for a possible Delphi study. Um, in addition to all that I mentioned that we do as surgeons and with our non-surgical colleagues and collaborators within ISFGS from around the world and through all facets of medical care, basic sciences, epidemiology, uh, basic research and the like, we also have some patient resources out there that explain to patients in, in very simple, easy to understand terms how fluorescence imaging works. Uh, so that they too can understand what's going on. So showing the benefits of fluorescence guided surgery, what is fluorescence guided surgery, and these are very simple, easy to use, they can scroll through pretty quickly, the key points, um, these things, I, I'm, these videos I'm sure with time will be in a variety of, of languages, but they're very professionally illustrated and, and I think quite helpful for patients who are thinking about, well, you're injecting this dye into me, provided the patient uh, doesn't have some contraindication to injection, what does that exactly mean? And they can uh, look through doctor-patient discussions, it'll give them some ideas of what questions they may want to ask, what are the problems that we're trying to solve with fluorescence imaging, what are some of the potential advantages of, of fluorescence imaging? What are the, some of the potential problems? What do they need to ask about that may be potential uh, contraindications? This one shows beautifully the kind of work that Drs. Rosenthal and Dip did, showing very clearly differences between white light imaging and uh, fluorescence imaging, and, and then offers uh, patients the opportunity to find surgeons in their area uh, by, by zip code uh, assessment and as I've been giving a, a pitch here today, it engages surgeons. So we want to hear from you. We want surgeons from around the world, regardless of your experience with uh, fluorescence imaging, we need to know. If you're not using it, why not? If you are using it, what have you found? How can we uh, help better improve the field of surgery uh, through better visualization through fluorescence imaging? There are patient portals just recently launched, mostly in the U.S., so far 619 users. So I hope in this brief summary I've explained to you a new society which we think will help all of us ultimately help patients achieve better, safer outcomes through better visualization in surgery. Thank you for your attention.